Hello everyone, so as some of you may know, the GTI is my daily driver and the BMW tends to not be started often. It's a car I don't use much, I usually take it out on weekends just for fun joyride. So it's not really something that I'm actually pulling out a lot, so you, as you can see it's actually parked in front. The GTI is at the back because the GTI is the one that I use on a daily basis. So what happened was I went to go and start the BMW and it just wouldn't start so the main reason for me making this video is to perhaps help somebody who has a similar issue where you have a bmw that is not starting so of course me being me i obviously do my best to try and diagnose something myself before i end up sending it to a mechanic and spending a whole bunch of money on trying to get the car fixed now as i said this is not a car that i am using a lot right so it's not something that's coming out on a daily basis so obviously i was expecting maybe perhaps a flat battery or something like that but it's it's kind of hard to tell so let me just explain to you guys how i figured out what this might be and what my solution is in this case so if i unlock the car you'll see that all the lights on the interior actually come on right so you can tell that there's probably battery power in the car so getting into the car you can see the interior lights have come on pretty much all the lights on the interior have come on so you assume okay we've got power right so i just assumed maybe it's a flat battery or something that's not right uh, i wasn't sure what the issue was so okay the usual you know put your foot on the brake uh try and start it right um all i got was was that all the accessories came on you can hear the fuel pump running you can pretty much hear everything coming on i've just got this exclamation mark which I'm not sure what that's all about but again it was difficult to tell what exactly was wrong with the car so of course me being me i try to diagnose problems before i spend any money so again there are some people saying okay your starter might be gone okay you might have a flat battery it's a possibility i don't use the car that often so it's a very big possibility the battery may have gone flat so i started looking into that but then i realized that something was a bit of a hint here Let's go check that out. The biggest hint on what may be wrong with the car came when I actually tried to start the car and I noticed that my brake pedal was feeling really really firm and I could not press the brake pedal no matter how much force I put into it. It was just not possible. Now one thing you know about these modern cars is that when you try to start them whether it's a manual or whether it's an automatic you need to have either your clutch down right to start the car or you need to have your brake down so you actually need to press the brake but the brake pedal was feeling really really stiff so that was a bit of a clue as to what's wrong in this case now of course if you are unable to press the brake pedal or your clutch pedal there is no way you're going to be able to start this car so it got me thinking right so what could potentially be wrong is it possible that maybe I don't have vacuum pressure in my brake lines is it possible it's the servo unit itself right maybe we're not getting the right amount of pressure to the brake pedal itself it could be it could as i say this solution might not be for everybody but it's the cheapest fix possible right and try this before you try absolutely anything else this is probably the easiest thing and the cheapest thing that you will need to be able to replace on any bmw so what the potential problem could be is the actual brake light switch which is right up above here so that's basically the switch that okay when you press your brake pedal it causes the brake lights to light up it obviously runs with your speed sensors with your gearbox itself as well there's a lot of things involved with that it's actually a magnetic switch which i will show you guys just now there is a very easy way for us to test whether this is or is not your issue in your case with your bmw now what we're going to need to do is obviously we're going to need to remove this panel over here we're going to need a couple of tools for that now what you're going to need is two very basic tools a panel remover one of these right and a t20 torx so basically one of these screwdrivers doesn't really matter what kind it is but as long as it works so we have these three torx bolts over here so torx screws i've already actually loosened them there's one two and then that's your third right at the end over there hopefully you guys can see that Right, so right over there is your third one then that's your panel clip that you actually need to remove it 
So that's your three torque screws over there. That's your T20s. Then we just got to get this one out over here. So we just pull on that. Got that out. We can actually pull that out as well. And there we go. It just kind of fell out. So we've got our panel out. Now we have access to our stoplight switch. Okay, so right over here, this is your brake pedal over here. So if you follow the brake pedal right along, you will see this little silver piece over here. Right, that is your actual stoplight switch. You'll see this black thing, right, is what the stoplight switch is actually plugged into. Right above that, we've got a wire that's plugged into that. This wire is a little bit difficult to get out. But now, for us to test whether this actual switch may be our, sin, our issue, right, so when we do press the brakes, right, what happens is this will obviously send a signal to the ECU to tell the ECU that you are actually pressing the brake pedal and you may now start the car right so obviously there's potentially something wrong with this or it might just be faulty or it's not sending the magnetic signal that it needs to send right so an easy way to test whether this is your issue is to actually unplug this white wire over here right so all we need to do just be careful to not tug on these wires up above here right so you need to be very careful put your hand on this white piece over here and tug upwards right be very gentle, you do not want to break these wires, right? Once you've done that, try and give it a shot to start the car. The moment I had done that, I actually decided to give it a shot to actually try and start the car. Now, I obviously put the key fob in, I started the car, I immediately felt my brake pedal go soft, right? And the car started up, believe it or not. And I knew at that point exactly that my issue was that stoplight switch. Now, of course, if your car starts up in that case, you know what the issue now is, right? But I would highly not recommend driving the car having pulled that switch out because you immediately start throwing a bunch of errors such as uh, shifter errors, um, speed sensor errors, things like that. Uh, yes, the car starts up, we know what the issue is, but I would not recommend at all driving the car at all. This is the reason I've actually kept the car in place and I haven't actually moved it around. You can even see I put some bricks by the wheels just to make sure because I was not sure whether my brakes are actually going to even work because now we have issues with the speed sensor as well so obviously that brake switch not being connected controls a lot of things with the ECU so you need to be very very careful of that now in South Africa that switch is about 400 Rand which yes is very expensive for a small piece of plastic but it's really not as expensive as you ending up replacing your starter or other more you know complicated things where you have to pay for labor where you can't really do much of a diy and that's where you might end up spending a lot of money i'm, I'm just trying to save some of you maybe a little bit of money if i can it saved me money and it's something that worked for me the car started right up i knew that's the issue now in order to remove the stoplight switch it is a little bit tricky so you're gonna have to be a bit patient so this stoplight switch actually has two pieces to it right so there's the piece that goes into this metal piece over here and the part that plugs in you need to tug on the part that plugs in like that right so if you have a look at that i'll bring this out into the light for you guys to see but the next part of actually getting that out is even more trickier. You need to actually press the brake pedal, get your finger behind that silver piece over there and press down, right, on top and at the bottom, right, and it will pop out. There we go, it's fallen out. Now, as I mentioned, right, this switch is actually a two-piece switch, right? You will see that there's obviously this part over here. This is the part that actually goes into that silver piece in front of the brake pedal, right? You can see it's actually hollowed out. Then there's this part. This part, believe it or not, looks like a cheap piece of plastic, right? But this is actually a magnetic piece. So if you were to put it against some metal, you'll see it sticks, right? Of course, you guys can't see that on camera, but it's magnetic, right? Which is such an over-engineered piece by BMW. This is typical German engineering for you, right? To over-engineer such a piece. So what happens is this part of the switch over here, right? Actually goes into that piece over there like that, right? And you'll actually hear a bit of a click, right? When it goes in, you'll see it actually comes to this end. I'm not certain the engineering behind this as to how this works, but 
some sort of magnetic signal is obviously sent through the switch and into the wiring to the ECU itself, right? But you can see that this switch actually can go further in, which means it's going closer to the brake pedal itself, right? So again, it's a very small piece of plastic. Obviously my car has a lot of mileage on it, so it's possible that this may have obviously gone faulty. So in this piece, obviously, as I mentioned, is a two piece, right? So again, when you, when this is on the car, the way you're getting this out is you are obviously pulling on this piece over here, right? Basically, you are putting force on that and then you are pulling this out, right? Otherwise, there's no way you'll get the switch out. That's a little bit difficult, but it's possible. This is obviously because I'm trying to film and do this at the same time. And I'm not actually able to see this. So again, once you get this part out, then you can start to work on getting this part out of that actual metal piece that is in front of the brake pedal, right? So in order to do that, obviously you are going in behind the brake pedal and you need to press these two little tabs over here. So if the camera will focus, you'll see that piece over there right and then there's another tab over there you'll see this little indent over here you need to actually press that in order for it to go in right and then it will pop out like that it's a little bit tricky you need to just take your time with it but it is possible to get it out and obviously the the installation of the new part is the reverse of that right so again you push this in first right and then you're obviously putting this piece of the switch in so out with the old and in with the new Right, so this is the new part that I have, if you guys want to see that, that's the part number. This is actually something that is available in the United States on FCP Euro. Right, so I obviously bought it at a local part store, it was about 400 bucks with a small little piece of plastic, over-engineered piece of German plastic. Right, so that's obviously the new part. It's obviously not made by BMW, it's obviously made by another manufacturer. So in this case, if a E is the manufacturer. Yeah, so let's get this installed. So this part is obviously not made by BMW. If I were to purchase this by BMW, I'm sure it would cost three or four times more than what I actually paid for it. So again, just for you guys, for reference, if you are maybe looking for this part at a local parts store, it's made by Top Ran, right? The original is actually made by Tyco. Not sure if you guys can see that, right? But obviously BMW sticks their stamp on everything. They obviously don't manufacture these parts in the house. But okay, let's get the new one installed again. It's the reverse of the removal, right? So obviously this hollow piece goes in first and then the actual magnetic switch follows with that. So this little hole over here is where our new switch will be going. What I've just done is I've cleaned this black piece of metal behind here with a dry cloth just to get rid of any dust so that obviously we don't have any issues with the magnetic signal when we are pressing the brake. So just an important thing to remember is that this part of the switch, right, so the hollowed out part, right, is something where this sort of ears part needs to go on top right so just bear that in mind it's very important to remember that okay so let's get this done so that's it pretty much we just pop it in so you should hear a click once you do actually press this part in over here, right? And you'll actually feel that it's firmly in place. Now we have the part that goes inside the switch, right? So just ensure that the part where the pin plugs in is actually facing upwards. Then of course we shouldn't forget to plug in this white plug over here which goes into the switch. Again just be careful to not touch the wires on top because that would be a very expensive fix. 
not something you can necessarily DIY. Maybe you could, but obviously it's going to require a lot of patience. Now we have this in and obviously what's left to do is test whether this works or not. Just making sure that everything is in the way it should be. Now all we have to do is start the car. Fingers crossed. So I would suggest before you even attempt to start the car, just lock the car, right? And then give it a few minutes, right? Give the ECU a chance to reset before we go and give this a shot. Also, I would suggest don't put this panel back on, right? So the one that goes above your pedals. Don't put this back on first. Try and start your car. Make sure that your car starts before you go and put that panel back on. Otherwise, it's all asshole to go and take it off again and so on. Okay, now it's been a couple of minutes, so give, let's give this a shot. Hopefully the car starts. Pretty much a conundrum. A BMW owner will always face at some point during ownership. Does it start? So we had a bit of a rough start again i haven't driven the car for about a week and a half the car is not i have not even started the car at all so we had a bit of a rough start but the car has started but as you can see we do still have an error when it comes to the brake pedal being pressed the car is not actually picking that up right so when i do press it so this obviously means we need a bit of adjustment in that sensor I'm sorry you guys might not be able to hear me over the car being on but I do not want to switch the car off right now as I say we had a bit of a rough start I do have a bit of a rough start issue with this car and sometimes when I try to start the car up on the second time it tends to wobble around I'm not sure what's going on with that I might have a bit of an issue with the JV4 itself but anyway that's besides the point right now in order to get rid of that error right the little foot on the brake thing on your dashboard or cockpit whatever you want to call it right what you need to do right now this is obviously my old switch I, I'm just doing this because it's a bit dark to see on the inside of the car right but what you basically want to do is right you want to bring the switch itself closer to the brake pedal the metal part of the brake pedal so all you need to do in order to achieve that to make this error go away is press this part in this part over here right just press it in right see that this part of the switch actually pops out right now chances are, you know what, you may not even need to replace the switch, right? Maybe there's nothing wrong with your switch, maybe it just needs a bit of adjustment, right? So rather than replacing this, look, I just thought it might be a good idea to replace the switch, right? It's a 400 Dan piece, yes, it's expensive for a piece of plastic, right? But I might as well get it sorted, right? I don't want to get stuck in the middle of the road anyway, might as well just replace it. I'll obviously have this one handy in the car in case something does happen to that switch that switch is not made by bmw it's obviously an aftermarket part so yes it's there's a potential it could fail right so again i will carry this around with me it's an easy thing to actually replace as long as you have a t20 torx with you and you have a panel remover with you to remove the panel right above your pedals you can actually achieve this right so again as i said it's all down to the adjustment of the switch right how far out is it sticking up right that will clear that error for you and sometimes that's potentially why the car doesn't want to start it's something that's so over engineered and something so silly this is so typically bmw and so typically german engineering for you right let's over complicate something that's so simple right something that could have just been a button right they decided to add a magnetic signal to it and all these overly complicated things right so again just that little bit of adjustment right i'm obviously pushing this a bit too hard but there's many levels of adjustment there to get it closer to the brake pedal so that you're getting a better magnetic signal here to send through the wiring to the ecu and it's as simple as that and bam there you have a bmw that has started and all it's cost you is 400 bucks that's it no expensive mechanics no towing the car here and there it's something you can do yourself this is diy this is quick i mean how long did that really take me of course on the video to film everything it takes me quite a while but in reality this is like a five minute job 
right? And it's something so simple that causes your BMW to not start. And bam, there you have it, a BMW that actually starts, right? So, problem solved, right? Again, if you have watched this far, thank you. And I would appreciate it if you could give me a subscribe and a like, right? I hope I've helped somebody out there. The only reason I've made this video is because I myself was so frustrated with this issue. I don't drive this car on a daily basis, but I love it, right? But again, few issues just keep on creeping up on it. But it's something so simple, something that you don't even have to spend that much money on. A quick, easy DIY that is really not diff that difficult to do. I mean, you could be absolutely anybody and you'd be able to finish this. You'd be able to do this. You'd be able to get your BMW started. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye.